everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series. Today I wanted to talk about a topic that I've, I've touched on before, but I wanted to do it in a different way. And it's, it's, it's one of those topics that's talked about a lot when you read through the uh, internet forums and questions being posed about folks who are trying to dial in presets. And that's back to this topic of where should we set our low and high cut uh, parameters, whether we use them in an EQ block or in a cab block. Um, I'm going to really focus today mostly on some comparisons um, between using the high cut mostly. Uh, the low cuts will be involved, but they're not going to be a variable. We'll just stick with the high cut as the variable today. And what the real topic of this video is going to be about is, is not only the highs and low cuts and, and, and comparing the, the sound of them out of a mix, but also in a mix. Now, the reason I say this is because so many folks are looking for that magic number. Where should I set my high cut, let's say. Okay, do I set it at 12 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz? And you hear a million different opinions about this. It really depends on who you ask. Some folks have it down to 3 kilohertz. You know? And it really depends, again, as I've mentioned before in other videos, whether we're using the cab block or whether we're using an EQ block. The EQ blocks are going to be much more dramatic slopes on them. So the, the, the settings are going to, you know, a 10K setting, as I've talked about before, in a cab block or an EQ block, the 10K setting uh, in the EQ block is gonna have a much more dramatic effect. Today we're gonna be using the cab blocks just because of the preset that I'm using was already dialed in like that. Um, but we want to, what, what I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about setting our high, high cuts and low cuts depending on what our purpose is. And I think that that's the thing that's missed a lot of times when folks talk about it and kind of throw numbers out um, as set in stone when I guess my answer always is it really depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're a bedroom player who is, you know, playing in, in a home studio through a particular FRFR monitor, you know, you may have, and then whatever your taste is on top of it, you may like a dark sound, right? You may not like to have much of that edge or the, the fizziness that, that some folks like to call it, right? So, so we want to dial those high cuts way down. The problem with that is now what if we take that same preset and we record with it, layered with other guitars, in a dense mix, let's say, with drums, bass, maybe keyboards, maybe strings, maybe, you know, layers of other guitars, is that same high cut going to allow that tone to cut through the mix, right? So something that we're playing while standing beside uh, an FRFR wedge monitor uh, in our own home studio may work really well, but it may not work when we're on stage with two other guitar players. Do you get what I'm saying? That maybe don't have those cuts and we're, we're kind of finding, no matter what I do with my volume, I can't, I'm not heard, I'm not cutting through, right? So I wanted to do a, a comparison of that and talk about the comparison of somebody playing just on their own, you know, uh, solo, by themselves, uh, not competing with any other frequencies, you know, there's no sonic competition, let's call it. Uh, so you can almost get away with whatever you just feel sounds good to you at that moment. And there's no right and wrong answer. It's all based on people's opinions and what makes them play better and what they like to hear, right? But then I want to show you what that same scenario might sound like in the context of a mix. Obviously, via video here, I can't do anything with a live sound type of thing, but I am going to use a mix. And I'm going to use a song. I pulled up a song from my latest album, and I went back to the, the multi-tracks. Uh, it's a song called uh, Poison and Power. It's from my new album, or my latest album, Brief Eclipse. Uh, this is really cool because it, it features my great friend Marco Miniman on drums who just knocked it out of the park and another really good friend of mine, Jason Henry, a uh, fellow Canadian who is an absolutely phenomenal bass player. So I had this smoke and rhythm section here. I'll let you hear a little bit of that when we go over to Cubase. Um, but what I did is I, I always, when I'm making these albums, is I record the USB 7 out of the Helix to get that DI'd sound. So if I ever want to go back and play with things, reamp them, I always have that. So what I was able to do with this, I was able to use um, one of the presets from my uh, Boogie preset pack that's available on, on Line 6 Marketplace. So you'll get to hear that in a mix soloed as well. And this, I did not touch it. I, I mean, I did different versions of it, but I'll show you it, it, as it is when you buy the preset pack. Uh, and how it sounds, and I'll, I'll show you the various changes I made to the cuts, but I'll, I'll make sure you, you are aware of any of the changes that are made. 
And I thought, I'm just gonna reamp all the guitar parts in this using this preset pack, which I didn't design for this song, but just sort of let you hear what it sounds like. Now, the guitar I used in this when I made the album last year was a Godin Summits classic with P90. So this is Seymour Duncan P90 pickups you're hearing. I, I really love those pickups. Um, so yeah, so let's go over to Cubase and I'll kind of explain to you what I have done here, okay? So here is my Cubase project up in front of us. And as you can see, I've got the drums here and they're condensed. There's Marco's amazing uh, drum track. I can let you hear a little bit of that in a moment. Here's my little time signature map up top. There's some 11 four, some five four, some four four. Um, so I'll just condense that. And then here's my friend Jason on bass. Let's take a listen to just the rhythm section. I'll solo those out. And this is what, what you're gonna hear. Okay, so I have it set up to loop. What you're seeing down here that's muted, this is what I use to, uh, to program the bass parts and then I send the score out to uh, a real bass player, in this case, Jason, who did a, an incredible job, as you can hear on it, and just a monster bass player. So what a great rhythm section to have uh, playing on this tune. Okay, so what I did then um, is I, I took my DI tracks here, as you can see, um, these particular tracks, if I solo this out, You'll notice here, I'll move this on the screen, I have an instance of Helix Native on it. If I bypass this, here's what you hear. Okay, so it's just the DI guitar. We don't need to hear that, it's pretty awful. Um, and then if I, if I pop on Helix Native, this is my um, Cali 4 lead uh, boogie preset, okay? Um, which is part of my, my boogie preset pack on Line 6 Marketplace. So this soloed guitar, uh, and as you'll notice here in the name, it says eight kilohertz. So that's where I have a high cut set on this, is at eight kilohertz. That's the way that that pack comes. And that same guitar part, now you might hear this pan to the left just because that's the way I had it in the mix. Um, let's see here, it is. Let, let me just center it off here so that you can you can hear it more up the, up the middle here, okay? So that, that's gonna sound like this processed by Helix Native. Now, a lot of folks may have an initial impression of that and say, wow, it's really kind of edgy and bitey and oh, maybe not something I would want to play around with. Uh, it has too much of that fizz, right? But I think you're gonna hear when we add things in the mix and in context, we're gonna be happy to have some of that fizz in my estimation anyways, and in my opinion. Let me move that back to the left. So here's what I did is I have a rhythm guitar one and two a lead guitar one and a lead guitar two and a lead guitar three. Now that sounds like a lot of guitars going on. I have rhythm guitar one and two hard panned left and right. I have lead guitar one slightly panned to uh, the setting of R37 in Cubase. Um, but you gotta remember the lead guitar one is just kind of taking over from lead guitar two here. So they aren't playing at the same time at first and then later they are again. So you're gonna hear at most like four guitars really going on, except for this tiny little harmony that's on lead guitar three here where it just plays a couple notes, okay? So really you have a hard panned left and right uh, guitar. You have lead guitar one, lead guitar two, which are playing separately and then together and then you have a tiny little harmony. So what I did is I duplicated that track, okay? Uh, or all those tracks, I'm sorry, all five of those. And then I did different versions of them. I went to Helix Native and I edited my boogie preset so that I had no, all the low cuts are always gonna set at 100 hertz for this, just, just so we have just the one variable. So the ones you're hearing here in the first group, these have a high cut in the cab block at eight kilohertz. 
As we move down here, I have the exact same tracks duplicated. And if you notice, it says no cuts. So the exact same things at no cuts. Then I have the exact same five tracks with a five kilohertz cut. And then I have all the exact same tracks again, but this time with a three kilohertz cut. And this one was named improperly. Let me put the three there. Okay, so we have three kilohertz cut, five kilohertz cut, eight kilohertz cut, and no cuts. Okay, so it'll really give us an idea of how these sound out of the mix, which we're gonna to listen to first, and then in the mix. And we'll go back and forth so you can, this is not about me telling you what's better. This is about me showing you what the difference is or, or letting you hear what the difference is. I can give you my opinion, but like I said, that's as worth as much as anybody's opinion, right? I know where I would go with it, but everybody's gonna have a different preference for this. But I just want you to be able to at least have the opportunity to hear it, okay? So let's do this. Let's listen to um, the individual tracks. So here's Rhythm Guitar One. We listen to it um, with the eight kilohertz cut. Let's listen a bit of that again, and then we'll go and, and compare it to no cuts, okay? So here we go. So this is, remember the eight kilohertz one is as this preset was dialed in and what you will get if you purchase this preset off of Line 6 Marketplace. So let's take a listen. Okay, let's take that and go to the same thing with no cuts. Hear the difference in the fizziness up top, right? Do you hear the little bit smoother high end? Now this is a, a balance. Let's go now and say, listen to the five cut, the five kilohertz cut. Smooth out even more, right? Now let's listen to the three kilohertz cut. And that's on rhythm one right here. Very dramatic change there. Now, let me also add something here. I volume meshed all of these to within 0.1 or 0.2 dB because as the cuts were made, we lose energy and perceived loudness. So much like the video I put out the other day about the perceived loudness, I used my LUFS meter to get these within 0 0.1, 0 0.2, about as close as I could get uh, perceived loudness. So you're not gonna hear a difference in perceived loudness. You're just gonna hear the difference in what that cut does, which is like I mentioned before, absolutely super important when comparing audio files. There's just no other way to really do it, okay? All right, so let's take a listen now to the three kilohertz again, and then we'll pop back up to the no cuts, and we'll, I think you'll hear a very dramatic difference. Here's the, here's the uh, three kilohertz. Here's the no cuts. Now, I think it's easy to automatically assume that, oh man, I like the three kilohertz so much better. It's smoother, it's creamier, it's, it doesn't have that fatiguing kind of fizz to it that so many folks don't like. So you say, yeah, you know, this is, this is an interesting point. W what do I do? Well, again, if you were playing simply in your room by yourself, you might go to the three kilohertz and go, you know, this is perfect, this is great. But how is that going to sound when it's mixed in with everything else, right? So that's the question that we're trying to figure out. We'll hear more about that once we go into the full mix comparison. So for now then, let's, let's do this. Let's compare the three kilohertz cut on that rhythm guitar again, but this time we'll compare it to the eight kilohertz cut. Okay, so here's the three kilohertz. Here's the eight kilohertz. Okay, let's do the three kilohertz again, and then we'll compare it to the five kilohertz. So here's the three kilohertz. And here's the five kilohertz. So what do you guys think? There's obviously a dramatic difference. Now, um, my take at this point is obviously with no cuts, I wasn't crazy, but I thought it was gonna be too fizzy and that's not gonna be great in the mix. I settled on the eight kilohertz. 
Uh, the five kilohertz is nice too. The three just seems too dramatic to me. But then again, if we're playing it by itself, it might be preferable for some folks who don't want to hear that fizziness. But just as long as you're aware that when you do get this, or if you do get it in the mix, maybe it's not going to work quite as nicely as you wanted it to. If that, am I making sense with that? I hope so. Okay, so let's do this. Give me a minute. I'm going to group the guitars together. Okay, so let's take a listen to some lead guitar maybe now. So here is the initial lead guitar melody part. This is how this preset is dialed in from Marketplace. This is with the 8 kilohertz cut. So this, let's take a listen to this. Okay, now let's compare that all the way down to the three kilohertz cut. What do you think? Obviously much darker. Some folks are cutting down there. I personally feel like that's too much for my liking. I think that's going to have a hard time cutting through the mix. The mix isn't going to have any presence to it, right? Um, it's, it's, it's a judgment call, right? But again, just hearing the difference. Now, if we take that and compare it to the 5 kilohertz cut, let's hear what that sounds like. You know, I almost think the five kilohertz could be a good balance between the eight and the three, again, depending on what we're doing, right? So it's gonna be really up to us to decide that. And then let's go and listen to the no cuts and see, see how that sounds. Again, when we compare it to like the five or the three, it, it sounds very grainy and annoying, almost, you know, fizzy, but you never know. Once we hear it in the mix, we may have a different opinion about it. Okay, so those are some of the solo tracks. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna group some of these tracks together with their um, paired up uh, different cuts, and we can hear all of the guitars, rhythms, and leads together in their various groups. So I'll be back in a moment after I've done that. Okay, so now what I've done is I've linked up all of these so I can solo them as a group now. So what you're gonna hear again is the two rhythm guitars panned left and right, lead guitar one and two panned slightly off center, and lead guitar three panned the other way, but it's just a very small harmony. So let's take a listen through uh, the eight kilohertz cut one first and foremost. This is how the preset comes from Marketplace, how I dialed it in for my liking, for what I thought at the time was going to be sort of a good middle ground that people can work from, you know? And if you guys prefer the five kilohertz and you buy this preset, then you simply just dial it back to five kilohertz, problem solved in, in two seconds, right? So that's what the beauty of this is. Small tweaks to even an existing preset can just make them our own, right? So here's the part. I'm gonna play this whole part all the way through so you can hear all the guitars together, now hearing things in, used more in a style that would be in a final mix with layered guitars and whatnot. Uh, remember, there's no other post-processing done to this other than the changes I'm making to the highs and low cuts within Helix Native, okay? So here's the tracks. This is the 8 kilohertz. Okay. Also ignore if you're reading here where all of these say no cuts. It's because I had the original bounced files with no cuts. So it just named them all that, but you're not actually hearing no cuts. You're hearing what is said over in this area here. Okay. Let's compare that now to the three kilohertz cut group together.
to the five kilohertz cut. Two no cuts. And back to the eight kilohertz cuts. What do you guys think? I mean, there, there's subtle differences between some, more dramatic obviously when we go between no cuts and three kilohertz, right? So I think my point here is that you can see listening to the three kilohertz or even the five kilohertz, you can say, oh yeah, that's so much better as we're playing or listening to just a solo individual track while we're playing in our room, maybe standing beside our FRFR. But then we get live, maybe those are gonna get lost in a mix. Maybe we need some of that fizz and some of that cut to get through, right? So as you can see, there's no simple one answer that always do your high cuts here, always do your, and then it really depends on the preset itself, right? How, how, how much high end and, and presence have you put into the actual preset itself too? So it becomes a very difficult thing, but I think this is just an interesting comparison to kind of see now. Uh, how they sound on their own. Okay, well, we've listened to them on their own. Now I'm gonna open another project that's gonna allow me, I've exported uh, all the different mixes here where with no cuts, eight kilohertz cut, uh, five kilohertz cut, and three kilohertz cut so that we can bounce really quickly in the mix and now see how this is gonna sound in the mix. And I also did one other mix where I kept the rhythm guitars at the eight kilohertz cut, but I did the lead guitars at the three kilohertz cut to kind of let you hear what it's gonna sound like when we have a really low high cut trying to compete maybe with guitars that don't have those, which I think is probably going to be the most interesting uh, one we can come across here. Let me get that project loaded up and we'll do some comparisons with that. All right, so here I am back with a new uh, Cubase Pro project called Comparison. And what I've done, I've used Cubase's lane feature, which allows me to pop between each file uh, seamlessly. And so these are all time aligned. They're all volume matched, as I mentioned. And if you notice here, it says no cuts, eight kilohertz, five kilohertz, three kilohertz, and then three kilohertz lead, eight kilohertz rhythm, as I had mentioned to you before. So with my little hand tool here, you can see I can just pop back and forth between these mixes. Whichever one is highlighted and not grayed out is the one you're hearing at that moment in time. So just keep an eye on your screen and we'll see uh, what it sounds like. So let's listen to the mix now with um, the eight kilohertz cut to start. This is where I created the preset to sort of live at this eight kilohertz that I feel it works well in a mix and I feel it also works well live and I feel it also sounds good in the room, but an easy thing to change if you prefer something different. So let's hear, and again, this preset was not designed for this song. So you're now hearing a preset that I made for Marketplace used to make a whole production that it wasn't really designed for, but I think it worked quite nicely on. So let's listen to this. This is the eight kilohertz. I'll listen through the whole track. Now you're hearing the rhythm section with Marco Miniman on drums, Jason Henry on bass, and the guitars by myself. All right, here we go. And it's uh, the same guitars I was talking about. Rhythm guitar one and two panned hard left and right, uh, a lead guitar one and two playing separately and then together in a tiny little harmony at some point. So, so here's the eight kilohertz um, mix, okay? What do you guys think? I like that. I'd be happy with, with using those guitars as is. So that's exactly how they came out of my uh, Line 6 Marketplace Boogie preset pack. That's the Cali 4 lead. Boom, done. Layer a few guitars, sounds great in the mix. No other post-processing, done. Well, what if I get rid of the cuts now altogether? So no high cuts. This still has the 100, I, I shouldn't call it no cuts. It still has the 100 hertz low cut, which is gonna be a pretty subtle thing or, you know. So let's listen to that. I'm gonna 
highlight that. So this is the no cuts. I'm gonna let you hear these mixes separately and then I'm gonna go through and jump through them as it's playing so you can hear them bounce back and forth and hear the dramatic difference, okay? So here is the no cuts. you notice but it's almost like the guitars maybe slightly take away from the cymbals airiness right because of the fact there are no cuts on it listen to the eight kilohertz again and then i'll go back and forth between the eight kilohertz and no cuts and listen to the guitars but also listen to the cymbals and see if you notice and the other thing is i hope everybody's listening on a decent set of headphones or a really good monitoring system because some of these things are going to be subtle you know listening on a cell phone or a mobile device is not going to cut it so if you have the ability listen on a, on a good set of headphones or a good speaker system so here's eight kilohertz and then listen for those changes when I go back and forth between the no cuts. I don't want to talk in there. Uh, I'll just watch the screen as I, as I flip back and forth. Here we go. Pretty subtle, but it's there, right? Okay, let's do this now. Let's listen through the five kilohertz mix. You get the, it's a little bit darker, right? Now, it, that, that might be what somebody wants. And that's gonna be up to the engineer mixing, that's gonna be up to the producer, whoever else, or yourself if you're filling all of those roles, right? Let's listen to a bit of that. I'm gonna go between eight kilohertz and five kilohertz and listen for the subtle differences and make you can make up your mind which one you prefer or which one you like less. All right, so here's the eight kilohertz first and then watching the screen as I switch back and forth. What do you think? Both are acceptable. I kind of prefer the eight kilohertz just because it has a little bit more airiness to the, to the guitars I find. They just have a little more presence to them and they, they cut a little nicer, but not in a fatiguing way like maybe having the no cuts would. Okay, let's listen to the uh, three kilohertz mix. And here's where you're gonna notice the big dramatic difference. And the reason I did this one is because so many folks talk about doing their cuts down that low, down to three kilohertz, right? Uh, it's fine, like I said, it might work really well when you're sitting in the room playing by yourself, but here's what's gonna happen to that whole mix and then I'll compare the three kilohertz and eight kilohertz. Okay, so here's the three kilohertz. Okay, so let's compare that with the eight kilohertz. I'll start back with me. Here's the three kilohertz first.
pretty dramatic, right? When you start off listening to the three kilohertz, it sounds, yeah, that's not bad. It's okay. And then when you hear the eight kilohertz, it's like somebody took a bit of a blanket off of the mix in a way and the guitars just kind of come out better. Again, that's my opinion. Others may disagree. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. I think if it was my choice, I would end up going with where I originally dialed this preset in with the eight kilohertz. Okay. So it is what it is. So let's look at this one last example. Actually, before we do that, let's do this. Let's go between, I'll play it again. I'll go between the no cuts, eight cut, eight kilohertz cut, five kilohertz cut, and three kilohertz cut, just so you can get your own impressions. Here we go. I'll play it back from the beginning, starting with no cuts and I'll work my way through. Watch the screen. What do you guys think? Pretty dramatic difference between the extremes here, uh, between some of the closer settings, eight and five, it's subtle, but it's there. And again, you gotta be listening on a good system. And really it's gonna be up to personal preference. I could probably line up, uh, you know, 20 different recording engineers and some are gonna pick eight kilohertz, some are gonna pick five kilohertz. I don't think too many would go with the three kilohertz. I, I just find it's a little, lacking some sparkle, lacking some of that, that needed fizz, if we, if you want to call it that, right? So let's look at this last example now. And this is the mix where I, I kept the rhythm guitars at the eight kilohertz cut. So they're going to cut a bit more, but then I did the lead guitars at three kilohertz to show you maybe that, wow, if we do this three kilohertz cut and we're trying to compete in a mix, whether recorded or live with guitars that are brighter, maybe we're going to get buried. Again, these are all volume match. So let's listen to this and, and give me your impressions of it. That, you know, you can tell me what you think. Here we go. So what do you think? Now let me do this again. I'm going to go back. I'm going to start off with the one with the three kilohertz lead and the eight kilohertz rhythm. And I'm going to go back and forth between the mix that I kind of prefer at eight kilohertz. Tell me what you think of how those guitars sit. You always got to do the comparison. Volume matches. I've done it here. Okay. So let's listen. Here's the first one with the leads at three kilohertz and rhythms at eight kilohertz. And I'll go back to the eight kilohertz one. What do you think? I still prefer the eight kilohertz just because it, it gives it that, that bit of cut, that brightness, that presence. But again, it's all my preference. Uh, you know, again, as I've said before in the video about volume matching, you know, 
this is so opinion based. It's so subjective, right? Um, I would never be, you know, so so big on myself to say that. Oh yes, it, it you know, you must do it this way, you must do it that way. Line up ten people; they're probably all going to give you ten different preferences. And we are talking about some fairly subtle differences in some of these changes. The purpose of this video is not for me to tell you where you should set them, but more to give you something to think about as far as number one your purpose uh, that you're going to be using them for. Are you going to be playing by yourself through an FRFR monitor maybe, through your studio monitors maybe? Uh, you know, that's by yourself just for your own enjoyment. Maybe you are going to bring those cuts down lower because you don't have to have it cut through a mix, right? And that might work out fine. Whatever is going to sound good to you and make you play your best and make you enjoy it the most is really where it needs to be. But just be aware that maybe those cuts aren't going to work as nicely once you get into a mix, whether it be recording or live, right? Possibly competing with other guitars. We may feel, I've, I've heard the complaint a lot of folks, I feel like I have to keep turning up, you know, to be heard and to cut through the mix. And maybe the issue shouldn't be that you have to turn up, but maybe you need to just change your cuts so that there is a little more cut and then you can keep your volume down. I had to actually increase the volume uh, on the three kilohertz lead compared to the eight kilohertz lead by I think almost a full dB, if, if I remember correctly, to get the same perceived loudness on that track and have it sit the same way. So I had to turn it up because of the lost energy from the cuts, right? Um, so, you know, I hope I gave you some stuff to think about there. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it helped. It's just more, like I said, I, I didn't do this video to tell anybody what they need to do, just more as food for thought for different scenarios and something to think about for, depending on, you know, how we're using it that, that may determine how we want to make those settings for ourselves. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed the music. If you guys like that, please go check out my website, uh, iTunes, uh, Spotify. You can download it from my website, uh, CD Baby. It's available in a lot of places. And uh, if you guys want to support me and grab a copy, I'd, I always appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy the music. Uh, Tony Levin's a guest on it on Chapman Stick. Mark Miniman plays drums across all tracks. I'm, I'm really proud of the project. It's entirely Helix, the tones on it. And uh, I'm very happy with the, with the project. So I, I, if you guys wanted to grab a copy, I'd appreciate it. If you want to grab a copy of the uh, Boogie preset pack, it's on Marketplace along with some of my other preset packs too, if you are interested. Uh, that's how it kind of helps me to, to, to be able to keep uh, doing these videos and putting them up uh, if, if, uh, if some folks support me in that manner. So I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the kind words and the support in so many, in so many manners. I, I really have a lot of fun uh, having some really cool discourse with, with folks and uh, have met a lot of cool people. So I hope some of you guys found that, that useful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, send them to me and I'll answer them as I have the opportunity to. Uh, for now, please share the video and like it uh, if, you, if you know of anybody who can possibly get some benefit from it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it, guys. And I will be back soon with some more content. All right, thanks again, as always, for tuning in and ciao for now.